Hi folks. Um, so for this week's uh, set of materials, we're going to try to finish out chapter one and then just start a little bit of chapter two. So just as a reminder, we've got our four conditions for regression. Independence is the thinking condition. And the other three you can check with plots. So I'm just going to draw a quick picture for each of these conditions of what it looks like when it is upheld and what it's when it's violated. So for linearity, we've got when it's upheld, um, we should have in our residual versus fitted plot, there's going to be a dotted line in the middle. And, um, and there would also be, you know, some data all around that dotted line. Uh, linearity being upheld, we have a nice straight red line right through the middle. And a violation would be if we had our dotted line in the middle and then we had some data, uh, some residuals like that, and so then we had a really curved, um, curved line. So that would be a bad plot for linearity and that would be a good plot for linearity. For normality, I like to look at the QQ plot. You could also look at a histogram, but I'm going to draw the one uh, for normality. So good would be if we had our data points and they were all somehow lying perfectly along the line. That would be really good. Uh, what would look bad is if we had that dotted line and then we had the data in maybe and then what would be bad is if we had the data in sort of a C shape, so it's pulling away like this, or if we had the data in an S shape. So an S shape would also be bad. So if it's, you know, sort of pulling away under and then over or vice versa, anytime that it's pulling away, that's going to be a violation of the condition. So that looks bad. That looks bad. And then for equality of variance, we are back to the residual versus fitted plot. And what would look good is if we had the data and it's forming a really nice even band above and below that dotted line, that would look really good. Uh, what would be bad is if we had some type of fan shape. So maybe we have low variance down here and then we've got really big variants up here, or vice versa. So that would be a violation. So then the question is, what do you do if one of those is conditions is violated? You find that it is not linear, or it does not have equality of variance, something like that. Well, you could just not use your model. That would be one option. But the thing that we're actually going to talk about today are transformations. So if you have your equation, you can apply any kind of uh, function transformation to those variables um, that could help you get your conditions to be satisfied. Uh, it might be blocked by my video, but the most common transformation that statisticians love is the natural log. Um, and then the second most common transformation is the square root transformation. So like square root of X or square root of Y. And this statistician named John Tukey has a thing called Tukey's bulging rule. And this will let you, it's sort of a rule of thumb, a heuristic to help you pick the right kind of transformation. So what you do is you look at your data uh, in the scatter plot or the residual plot. And if it has some type of curve, then you pick the colored curve on this image that looks the most like your data, and then you'll decide to do one of these transformations. So let's say that my data looks like this. Um, it's kind of, you know, got a curve in the, um, uh, in the scatter plot. Then I would either try to do a y squared transformation or a square root of x transformation. And then if I, if those transformations didn't work, then I could make it more extreme by going y to the third or taking the log of y, and then I could go further and further in those directions. So it's not like a 
proof. Uh, it's not something that's been formalized. This is just kind of a rule of thumb to help you as you're working. But like I said, most of the time we do a natural log or we do a square root. Uh, very rarely do I actually do either of these kind of transformations where I'm raising things to powers. So I've got an example here where I'm trying to predict the highway fuel economy of some cars based on the displacement, sort of the size of their engine. And here's the scatter plot. So we could kind of think about linearity here, but then I've also got um, the residual versus fitted plot. We can see that that red line, it doesn't look linear. Uh, and there's probably things going on with the other residual plots that are bad. So then the question is, what transformation could be good? And what we want to do is look at our scatter plot and see what it most looks like in terms of that Tukey's bulging rule. So I see that sort of a curve, and I'm going to go back to Tukey's bulging rule. And I think that that uh, line looks most like this orange line. And so maybe I want to take a square root transformation of x or y, or a log transformation of x or y. So my favorite transformation is log. So I actually just logged both of these variables um, and the function is log in R. And now I've made a scatter plot where I can see that this looks a lot more linear to me. It doesn't have that curve that it used to have. Um, and then if I ran a model with those logged variables and looked at the residual versus fitted plot, this line looks much flatter to me. So the conditions are upheld more. Oops, I forgot that I changed in my model. I actually just took the log of highway for this model. I didn't take the log of displacement. Um, I could have taken the log of both of the variables, but um, it looks like I actually chose to just do the log of the Y variable. So let's go and look at our model output. Uh, the thing that I'm always the most interested in are these coefficients, which are in the estimate column. Um, and I'm going to write a sentence to interpret, um, in particular, I'm going to interpret the slope because that's the thing that we're usually the most interested in. The problem is uh, by making this transformation, by making a log highway be my response variable rather than just highway, um, my sentence is going to change. And in this case, I'm going to say for a one liter increase, in the displacement of an engine, we would expect a 15.5% decrease in highway mileage. So you might have noticed uh, something that's different about this. So this is similar to my uh, sentence where uh, I would say, you know, for a one unit increase, we would expect a beta one hat increase or decrease. But in this case, um, instead of just saying it in the units, we're going to use a percent. So if I've taken the log of a variable, then when I interpret it, I can use percent in the sentence. So the generic sentence for this one is for a one unit increase in the explanatory variable, we would expect a, I don't know, beta one hat times 100% uh, increase or decrease in the response. Uh, this beta one hat times 100% thing, that's kind of confusing, I think, but hopefully you can see it said negative 0.155 and I said a 15.5% decrease. So I knew it was a decrease because that coefficient is negative and I said it was 15.5% because it was 0.155. So 0.155 times 100 is 15.5. If I had taken the log of both the X and the Y variable, I would say for a 1% increase in the explanatory variable, and then it's gonna be a, and again, beta one hat times 100% increase, decrease. So this one is log of X and log of Y, and this one is just log of Y. 
So I just want to do a little arithmetic to prove to you that this um, sentence works. It's not exact, it's just kind of a rule of thumb. Um, and so I had my, uh, my model, y hat is equal to 3.66 minus 0 0.155 times displacement. And so I could plug in for a engine that has a four liter displacement. So this is four liter dispel. Um, this is uh, now the log of y is equal to 3.039. So uh, the predicted value, the log of the predicted value is 3.039. Well, that's not very easy for humans to interpret. So the way that you reverse the natural log is you exponentiate. So I want to do e to the 3.039. And in R, the way that you do that is with the exp function. So e to the 3.039, that's equal to 20. 0.89, so we would expect a 4 liter engine to get 20.89 miles per gallon. So that's our prediction. And then we're going to do a one unit increase in the explanatory variable. So I'm going to plug in 5 for my displacement, 5 liter displacement. And that comes out to be 2.88. So again, I want to do e to the 2.88, and that turns out to be 17.88. So it's lower. Bigger engines, we would expect less gas mileage. And we can see that if I do my mileage for the 4 liter displacement car times 0 0.155, so 15% of that, it's, uh, so this is 15% of 20.89 is 3.24, basically. And if I subtract 20.89 minus 3.24, that is 17.65, which is about equal to 17.88, which is the true value. So it's not exact, uh, but it is pretty close. So that's why statisticians love the log transformation is because you can change the way that you do your interpretation sentence and it still kind of makes sense to humans. So if you have a log of X or log of Y, you can use the percentage rule of thumb. But if you have like square root of X or square root of Y, there's no good interpretation. It, it becomes less easy to explain to someone. And if you do, you know, like x squared or x cubed, anything like that. Um, so again, that's why we use the log the most frequently is just because it has such a nice interpretation.